You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. Drum ringers on? Uh, I think mine's on vibrate. Besides, Nina's out of town, so I doubt she's going to call me in one time for next week. <laughs> for an entire week. Mm-hmm. She's on vacation from you, not just vacation. I'm going to have to keep track of her just through Facebook. Yep. So everybody's bre- huffing and puffing right now it's because we just got done doing a 40-yard dash. <laughs> Joking. Everybody's, and Joe. Everybody's yeah. smoking cigars. Joe won. Yeah, but he pulled his hamstring, dude. Do you remember that? Yeah, he barely made it. I, I, finished, I, didn't, I didn't barely make it. Hey, I finished I last, make it. but I wasn't in pain. <laughs> hey, when I ran this race, I knew I'd come in third place. <laughs> I said, this is how I said it. It'll be Eddie, it'll be Joe, then it'll be me. And then the other two. <laughs> the other two can fight. Your, thir- your third place was actually your f- or third place was actually your first place yeah <coughs> well uh, i was only racing against them too <laughs> she was in a different league i knew i'd lose against you guys hey pull your microphone closer before i tell dad that you're drinking a beer i am not drinking or smoking <laughs> yeah so uh little chunky little mikey is riding around on the four-wheeler so that's that noise no he's not i mean he's not he is but he's not alone he's got a supervisor yeah, the bellouts are with him. Yeah, the bellouts the bell are with him. The bellout crew. He's giving them rides. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so when I first started doing the podcast, my my initial uh, my initial thought process was, uh, I told Nina, Joe's moving everything all of a sudden. He's got to move everything so he can make noise. Hey, you got all your shit moved, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah, cussing because one, I don't cuss. We're Two, good. my daddy's going to listen to this. Dad's going to listen to this. You know he's going to listen to this. Look, Mikey's <laughs> going to use all that gas. But uh, uh, anyway, so uh, my, my thought process was I wish I had uh, a recording with Eddie. And that's Barbara dumping her sorry, cigar in the beer. Sorry. But uh, uh, so then I, I wanted to start <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> I wanted to start the podcast that way. Uh, we could eventually get to this point here where we're having a conversation talking about Eddie, sharing some memories, some fun stuff about Eddie. That way, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, uh, grandkids or Tommy or somebody or anybody interested in hearing some funny stuff about Eddie will have that opportunity. So uh, right now I'm sitting, ooh, that sounds terrible. I won't tell everybody that you just spit dip. <laughs> <laughs> You know I'm telling everything, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, Eddie would tell. Eddie would tell. I, I'm smoking a cigar, guys. That was not a cigar. That's gross. But uh, anyway, so Vidal, whenever you speak, if you can scoot closer to that, be cool. So I'm here with Vidal and uh, my brother Vidal, my brother Joe, and my sister Barbara, and we're at Molo Acres at M5 Shooting Range, uh, and we just shared a. A burger for Eddie because that was kind of one of our th- one of our things. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know who started it, but every time we would go somewhere together, anytime somebody would get up and leave their food behind, uh, we'd all take bites. I'll of it. I'll tell you exactly who started it. Who started it? Eddie started it. Eddie started. <laughs> yeah, Eddie started it. <laughs> because every time you'd get up out of your seat, he would eat your food or drink your or beer. Drink your beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he started it. Yeah. And so it kind of just became a tradition. So you knew better uh, not to leave your food behind or finish it before you went to go pp because it definitely got passed around the table it got passed around the table <laughs> take it with you <laughs> you can at least honk that's going to be an ongoing thing Him alone here we say we're boring i know he did say we're boring so screw that kid sorry <laughs> <clears throat> but uh uh so yeah that was one thing that that i guess kind of turned into a tradition and so now when we get together we try and share a burger in, in eddie's honor uh eddie did a lot of a lot of funny uh, mean things. Uh, so you and Barbara grew up with him. Well, let's let's kind of start backtrack a little bit. Uh, my dad had five kids with three women. So <laughs> 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 sorry, Dad. Uh, so he he was today. He that was, was before be- he came. That was before he came to Jesus. Yeah, it was, it was, G- it was Jesus meeting. Pre Jesus. Yeah, it took Grandma to get sick to come to Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, but, sorry, Dad. <laughs> man, you're rude for, for being his I said I was sorry. last favorite. But uh, uh, so 
dad had five kids with three women and and the and the funny joke about it is that typically a, a kid when parents divorce they go with the mom well in dad's case eventually they all made it back to dad and uh except for my mom because my dad decided she was worth keeping so <coughs> we've stayed like a child for i ain't no more child for <laughs> <laughs> he's like screw that i may as well stay in the house that i'm paying for <laughs> sorry dad uh, but anyway, so Eddie, Joe, and Barbara grew up together early. Uh, so you, you had the original siblings. You had the uh, uh, the original mistakes. <laughs> the real mistakes. <laughs> and then uh, eventually Vidal Vidal was born, and uh, Vidal and I are kind of uh, Mexican twins. <laughs> so uh, uh, there's a real close half siblings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but <laughs> so you guys grew up. I, and I, I guess right now, directly talking to Joe and Barbara, you guys grew up uh, mostly with Dad, Suko, and Grandma, right? Right. So uh, uh, Eddie, as a little kid, what, what was was he always the same as he was when he was older? Kind of a uh, kind of mean and funny and. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> Dad, Dad told me the story. I honestly don't remember it, but Dad had said that Dad used to was really into wrestling a lot when we were younger. And I don't think you remember the story because you were in pain. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I blocked it out. <laughs> and uh, Dad had taught Eddie how to, how to put somebody in the Boston Crab. So I guess Dad came home from work one day and he could hear somebody yelling in the back. And I'm going to keep the story, the story short. Well, Dad went around the back after a few times hearing me yell. And Eddie had me in the Boston Crab. And we were probably around 10, 9 years old. So, yeah, from an early age, Eddie was mean. <laughs> <laughs> he was always mean. He put me in the figure four. He promised that he would let go as soon as I said it did hurts. You, did you tap out? I tried tapping out, but he wouldn't let go. I had to, let go. He had to see tears before he finally, oh, you're right, I guess it does hurt. <laughs> and then he let me go. So how did he end, out of the three, you guys, how did he end up being Grandma's favorite? Because compared to Eddie, Grandma couldn't stand the two of you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he he opted to live with Grandma when mm -hmm. Dad got married with Carmen. I mean, it was just, and, but he was so close to Grandma. And the way I, I mean, I believe he asked Eddie what he wanted to do, and Eddie said he wanted to stay with Grandma. So he did. And yeah, that was Grandma's baby right there. She loved us, but she didn't love him, love us like she loved him. <laughs> no, she pretty and, much, Eddie was, Eddie was her baby. Mm hmm. I remember uh, when he lived with her in, across the railroad tracks. Uh, I'd go over there and stay stay with him, and it was funny because uh, all we would do is listen to Eddie and the Cruisers and play paper football. <laughs> and the refrigerator was full of two things: uh, patio or t uh, Tony's pizzas, yeah. patio dinners, and Big Red. And then uh, he showed me where he'd keep his his uh, dirty magazines on top of the water <laughs> heater at Grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's when he also had Dad's truck with the holes in the floor. And so anytime we'd go over the railroad tracks, the keys would jiggle out of the ignition, and they'd fall through the hole in the floor, and he'd have to do a U-turn. i have to get out of the truck and go get the keys before somebody else ran over. <laughs> well, it didn't start off like that, though. It was a good truck, mm -hmm. and he gave it to Eddie, and then Eddie messed just up tore it up. Messed up the hood, <laughs> cracked the window, the windshield. And I, when I graduated high school, I worked at the highway department in the summer, and I remember I got my last check was like $535, and I was so happy. But I was fixing to go to B County, so Dad said that my last check, we would have to fix this truck so I could drive it to go to, to school. So I handed him my $500 and thinking, I'll get like $300 back, right? I get like $60 back. They put tires on it, a new windshield, and a hood. And so then I drove that. Are you keep driving it? No, I drove it. <laughs> you drove but, it to that. Yeah, it was a piece of junk when I got it. Eddie was notorious for not taking care of Eddie anything. Eddie didn't take care of nothing. Anything. That's. I just gave Eddie. Vidal, what's it called? Vidal, the, the battery, the charger. Like oh, a jumper yeah, cable. The, the booster. A jump, booster. Jump, the jump starter. Uh -huh. I just gave it to him the other day. And I said, here you go. It's missing the plug to charge it because I let Eddie borrow it. And I never got the plug back. <laughs> and I was like, and what the hell do you want me to do with this shit? So rather than argue, I just said, okay, leave it on the porch. I figured you could look it up and find get another plug. Eddie, Eddie borrowed a nice chest once. It was a little small one. We had gone fishing in the valley. 
And uh, every time we'd go fishing down there, he would, it, next to little Mikey, Eddie was the worst co-pilot, man. He would fall asleep the whole time. But he wasn't asleep, he was on the phone. And he always had two phones. <laughs> and uh, uh, I remember we got down there, we went fishing, and we caught some fish. And I, I was the only one who took a cooler because I was responsible. And uh, what <laughs> <laughs> so I lent it to Eddie. Eddie was going to bring the fish home. And he said, hey, I'll take the fish home and I'll do a fish fry and you can come over. All right. So the, he had the cooler for a long time. And uh, there's little Mikey again. I'm going to shoot the tires out of that thing. Anyway, so he took the ice chest home and he had it for a month or two. Finally, I was just, I had it. I was like, Eddie, I, I'm ready to bring the ice chest back. And I pestered him, pestered him, pestered him. Finally, he brings it back. Now, granted, he had put ice and some fish in a bag in it. When he brought it back, he left it. He goes, hey, I left your cooler in front of the uh, garage door. And I said, okay. I got home from work. I picked it up, and I opened it, and I was like, what in the world? There were half-used and some full uh, 12-gauge birdshot bullets in it with busted beer bottles and beer left in it with mold all over the inside of the ice chest. I couldn't even do anything with that. I threw it away. And... Uh, after that, the lawnmower incident was uh, was when I cut him off of lending him stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I bet he laughed the whole time he put when he put the ice chest out of your house. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he laughed the entire time. He knew exactly what it looked like inside. Yeah. Uh, this guy's crazy. You know, Honestly, thought you were gonna tell me the fish was still in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. I, 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 you At know, least he you asked y'all to borrow stuff. <laughs> he never asked me. He just took it. <laughs> So when you guys were in high school, Joe, uh, and remind me if I'm if I'm right, but I feel like you burned through a few women in high school, and uh, afterwards Eddie was quick to pick them up. <laughs> we won't have to name any names, but I don't even know what he's talking about. There, there was there was there was one. <laughs> I don't remember Eddie calling. Uh, would it be all right with you? <laughs> Dude, I don't care. <laughs> You know, that's, that's very gentlemanly of him to ask for permission. <laughs> that's so funny. You know how, um, anyway, here we are. You know how I had to tell Eddie that, uh, you know how I had to tell Eddie I was gay? No. <laughs> he kept going every day to hit on the person that was at my house. <laughs> Finally, I had to say, hey, Eddie, uh. I'm with this person. And he's like, "Oh, I didn't know that." <laughs> and how long? How long after that did it take him to stop going over to hit on her? <laughs> so then he looked you straight in the eye and he said, "So you're saying there's a chance?" <laughs> he said, "Game on." G a y n e. Oh man, Eddie was a Eddie was a very good athlete. Uh, he was a terrible student, uh, <laughs> but you know, Dad always tells a story about how uh, Eddie, I guess, wouldn't wouldn't necessarily get the the ball the way he probably should in high school uh, playing football, and uh, so he pulled him out and he pulled you out. And you, I remember he, Dad saying how you asked, you told Dad, well, Dad, you told us not to be quitters, and yeah. uh, so Dad was kind of like, well, we're you know, it's kind of a or supporting your brother kind of thing and i don't know that it ever got any better but man he was he was i remember being a little kid watching you guys play and eddie was fun to watch because eddie was so tough to get a hold of and tackle yeah he was but good Eddie was definitely good at what he did mm-hmm. yeah i still i remember that week because dad dad pulled him out of the uh on friday night he pulled both joe and eddie out oh after on the game, game night yeah. it was after the game, oh, he, after the he, game. He, he waited outside and said come on you guys are not playing anymore and it was a long week at school because y'all didn't get to practice, right? Yeah, we didn't get to practice that week. And uh, I remember being in class, and one of the coaches was the teacher, and he asked me about it. And I said, my dad said that he said, well, you got to remember that so-and-so was a hot hand that night. And I said, well, my dad said, if you give the ball to that guy 25 times, he better be the hot hand. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, but he finally let y'all come back, right? Y'all came back that week. Yeah, coach. I think one of the coaches may have been Coach Kennedy. Went over and talked to Dad. No, it was Coach Smith. Coach Smith. Coach Smith yeah, was, was Coach, Coach Smith. Smith was the only guy that went to bat for Eddie. Yeah. Because you know, Coach Smith, he was you know he lived down oh, the road. He, he lived was right a good across dude, the street. You yeah. know, real good guy. You know, I had the I had the uh, the pleasure of having him as a coach, and uh, you know, a lot of the things Coach Smith said was 
was you know he'd be like you know he'd talk to, he'd tell me stories about eddie and stuff in practice and you know when i was practicing but uh you know coach smith was a good guy he went to bat for eddie and he's the one that talked to dad and said hey you know i understand the situation i'm not blind of it he goes however it hurts eddie more not to be a part of it than to be a part of it and have to go through you know the times of what it was yep. which to be honest the times haven't really changed i mean that's just a fact but it was a lot worse back then and going back to uh you know i'm gonna put it in layman's terms for everybody because you know how it is you know everybody's like you know everybody's gonna say and criticize oh well you know my son's a superstar my son should be the quarterback my no the fact of the matter was is that you know and, and i never had the, the the privilege of watching eddie play but you know i would hear throughout the years before i even before i even came to george west and met y'all i would always hear about through uh through my brothers chris david you know i would hear the stories about what great athletes that you guys were and uh especially the the great athletes about about eddie and uh you know they would tell me they would tell me you know eddie would get the ball five times this is chris and david talking chris and david talking to me so <coughs> the other guys were hot hands but they had 125 yards rushing on 25 carries <laughs> however eddie would have 120 yards on five yards i mean on five carries so you do the math i mean yeah. the guy had potential to bust out four over 400 yard games but you know when you when you make it when you make an 80 yard run on one carry and of course you know you get inside the 10 you know they're gonna put certain people to run in and get the touchdowns yeah and that's just a fact yeah. you know that's not that's not an imagination that's not you know whatever that's a fact yeah. you know and everybody there knows it and everybody that did it knows it and so you know coach smith wasn't blind to that but like he told dad he said you know it hurts eddie more not to play than to than to be a part of it and have to go through that which he was right you know because eddie didn't want eddie loved the game yeah you know he loved sports he loved the game i mean he coached for for a good while after he quit uh after he you know his high school career ended you know and the guy had a lot lots of potential and he was a good he was a good coach you know i helped him coach a little bit in, when he was in the valley when i would go down there and visit him i'd go to some of his junior practices uh, for baseball and he had a good relationship with the kids and the kids liked him and uh you know that one of the things that that i learned and uh you know i've never ever said this but it's always stayed in my head is you know i coached uh i coached little league for over 20 something years and i coached peewee football for over 20 something years and one of the things that always stayed with me and why i was pretty uh, successful was that Eddie told me coach the way you would play the game if you coach the way you would play the game you're gonna be all right you know and I always did and I noticed that when I tried to deviate from that and, and go to the X's and O's it didn't always work out but when I coached the way I would play the game the way Eddie told me we were successful you know yeah and uh, that's one of the big things that stayed with me you know as far as like the sports sports things go so I wasn't fortunate enough to watch him play, but I was fortunate enough to be a part of his some of his practices and learn that from him. And it, and it was obviously one of the biggest things to, to help me, you know, and, and what I love to do or what I loved to do at the time. Well, you saw, you saw Eddie, at, like, whenever we played kickball and things like that, because every time we would get together, we'd have, have an event or barbecue, and we'd play kickball or, or, paper, or flag football in the park. And... Uh, Eddie was really fluid in his movement, you know, in his running and his throwing and just his, his, uh, he was so fluid. So his high school was like that. And, and, you know, Eddie played a lot of softball and I know he was good at baseball, but I, I remember him mostly for his football stuff, but it seemed like maybe baseball was more of, of the thing that he liked most, or maybe that's just because he was able to continue playing some sort, some right. form of it after high school, yeah. you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I remember his in high school, I don't remember what, what grade we were in, but I know we were in high school. We always looked for games to play, and we started playing what was a, our version of handball behind Morrison's. Over by Morrison's, right? Over at Morrison's grocery store. They had a big brick wall, and Eddie, 
I think it was Eddie and Robert Arceba and Richie Canales and myself. And then there was two other teams there. I don't remember who they were. But it always came down. We played a little tournament. Eddie always made the bracket. And we always played a little tournament. And I it was for always. Money, didn't you? Yeah. We, we all put in like two bucks each or whatever it was. Eddie didn't do much if it wasn't for <coughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> and we. Uh, and it was always down to the final game, it was always between Eddie, Eddie's team and myself, and, uh, and or Richie and I. And it always went back and forth with us. So after we finished what we called our season, I told Eddie, I said, you and I should be on the same team. Yeah. I said, you and I should be on the same team. That way we can win the whole thing. Yeah. And he didn't have, he, was, he felt kind of bad because, you know, he and Robert were, were good friends. So I finally convinced him of doing it. And then we, we killed everybody. And we only had a couple of tournaments after that. They were like, well, we don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I, remember, I remember watching uh, you and Eddie play. And I think it was the last tournament, and y'all won. And we're and I never talked badly, but we're walking off the eggs. We had to walk home, right? We had to walk home after. Yeah. That. And I was like, man, we really kicked ass today. I remember. So. That. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Hey, that. somebody had to watch. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I just watched. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and and uh, you were a good athlete too, Joe. You really were. But it seems like Eddie got a lot of the attention, he, and and rightly so, rightly so. I mean, Eddie Eddie was a pitcher; he was a running back, and you know those positions get it a lot just, more yeah, attention. Yeah, different positions. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, and rightly so. You know, I always felt, and not in a bad way, but I always felt that I lived in Eddie's shadow. You know, it was like, you know, oh, you're Joe, oh, you're Eddie's brother. You know, but I mean, I was, I was. I was his biggest fan, you know. Eddie, Eddie was good. That's all it was to He it. was good. He was very you know? good. Well, Eddie, Eddie was like, like I'm gonna use my boys for example. Like my opinion, Matt is the way more natural, better athlete. Yeah, he's a natural cannon arm. Uh, could hit the ball. Uh, you know, one's more natural, one more great. Yeah, yeah, and and. The thing with Jared is, is that Jared was not as natural, but we did a lot more work, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, Matt played it one time, and Jared played it another time. I mean, it would have been awesome to see them play together, but five-year difference, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and I think, you know, one of the things that that you, you s it separates is, you know, some kids have the it factor, you know, and and Eddie always had the it factor. You know, yeah, I mean, he was good. He was natural. And one of the things that he always told me was he was always like, you know, you always got to know, you always got to be a step ahead. You always got to know where you're going before you even get there. Eddie, Eddie had a Eddie had a shooting pool mentality. Yeah, he's always said. Oh, up the we love, we love yeah. to shoot pool. Yeah, he loved to shoot pool. He I had was to good. put a pool he together was good at that too. I had to put a pool together, pool table together with that guy until four o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, dude, I gotta go home. You probably like, put it together by yourself. Oh, more, more, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know Eddie didn't even have a toolbox. It was sissy tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were sissy. And tools. then we finished putting it together, and he's like, "Well, we gotta play a game." Mm -hmm. So we ended up playing pool from four to six <laughs> o'clock in the morning. You know, because yep. he wasn't gonna lose. <laughs> yeah. In the in the baseball <clears throat> years. Like Eddie, I, I remember Eddie showing up and Eddie wouldn't do anything. He'd take a nap while everybody warmed up. Mm. Were yeah. people resentful of that kind of, or was it kind of like they knew Eddie was going to show up so they didn't sweat it? No, I, go ahead, boy. I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school. And we would run from where the bus barn is, and we'd have to run down to the baseball field. And my the whole team is practicing. The whole baseball, the high school baseball team is practicing boys baseball. Except for Eddie Molina, he is laying down in the dugout, in the dugout. asleep, <laughs> and that's what he did. All he had to do was show up and pitch. And, and that's what that's what that's what is uh, to me is amazing because uh, to 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 have that's not amazing to me. I was like, he, well, should, he needed to be out there. No, no. Well, I mean, to to have, and I say amazing in in a different way because it's borderline arrogant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's borderline arrogant to go. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do my job, but I don't have to do anything else. You yeah. know, and it's like because had he not done his job, there would have been problems. You know, but it was kind of like, well, Eddie's gonna show up. You know, and he did it enough, and he did it often enough to where uh, 
they didn't question him. You know, they right. let him do this, the it, stupid stuff yeah. that he, you know, you know, he would do. It's, it's funny. It's like when Eddie passed. I mean, Eddie always said the great Eddie Molina. Yeah. So when he passed, people made koozies, right? The, whole, the great one, right? The great oh, one. the great one. You got and, one right now, girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> the thing is, Eddie never bragged. You know, I mean, he talked a lot of smack, but he didn't brag. He never sat there and said, oh, I did this and I did that, which he did all that. But he didn't brag about it. I think people just knew that, but I think that people just liked him so much because he was such a good guy. Yeah, Eddie was you know? very likable. Eddie, Eddie, to me, was probably the most popular out of all of us because he's just so likable. Wow. And uh, but, you know, going, I want to touch back on what 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 Vidal was talking about. You know, when when you have a parent that that thinks their kid, you know, should be the quarterback or should be this. One thing about dad, dad would be the first one, and I think we're all like that. Dad would be the first one to tell one of us, you know, no, you're not going to play because this guy's better than you or that, you know, she's better than you, you know. And dad wasn't the type of pr parent that would push you just because or say, hey, my kid needs to play. Yeah. You know, dad did that for Eddie because he knew Eddie was that good. Yeah. You know, had he not been, I don't think dad would have said anything about it. No, he wouldn't have. I mean, I remember, uh, I remember the Red Sox when dad was coaching my t-ball team. I was so excited because <laughs> I was the coach's kid. And I was like, I'm going to start, I'm going to hit. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. And I remember Dad sitting me down and going, I'm only going to play nine. I have to play them all, but only nine are going to get all the innings. You know? Mm -hmm. And he said, if you want to play, you need to be one of the best nine. If you're not, you're not going to play. And I remember being like five or six-year-old going, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on Bucky Hoodman's team. He was the same way with me, though. We would pick up these two girls. One was from Mathis and one was from Pleasanton, and they were older than me. I was a shortstop all the time. When we picked them up, I was the third baseman. And I was like, you know, they're not better than me, and I know that they're not. And he said, yeah, but they're smarter than you, so go to third base. They probably still are. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and he's like, but they're smarter than you, so you're going to third base. And so when they played, I was playing third base, and I knew it. Yeah. And that's like, Dad didn't care you were his kid. You know, like, like Matt could play varsity as a freshman, you know. Matt was a different time. And uh, Matt was just a little more physically talented, you know, a little more speed, a little more this, a little more that. Jared, not so much. Jared was a good athlete, you know, he was a real good athlete. Jared, like you said, is a little smarter on the game, make up for the other stuff. And, you know, both of, up in, both of them ended up being good athletes. But I remember when they wanted Jared to move up to varsity as a freshman. And uh, they were going to move him and Brendan up. And I was like, nah, that's not going to happen. And uh, so, you know, I talked to Carnegie, and Carnegie's like, well, you know, uh, Jared can play at that level. I said, I have no doubt Jared can play at that level, and I have no doubt that he could be successful at that level. But at the same time, Jared's 14, and everybody else is turning 19. It's not going to happen, you know? Like, it's not all about the T-shirt, you know? It's about knowing where you're at. You know, with Matt, it would have probably been a different story. Now, Jared was a little further behind, but I always remember. And, and you know, the reason I bring it up is because I, you know, talked to Eddie and I asked his advice. And he said, what do you think? What do you think? You have to go with what you think. And I said, honestly, he needs to stay with this team because it's a hell of a team. I mean, it was one of the best teams, you know, because I think what your team went undefeated, right, Joe? 10 and 0? In what? In football. football. Yeah. He J also had a team that went 0 and 10. 10. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last game was against right. Quero, Texas, and they lost 78 right. to 0. And it was the longest ride home. I do recall that as a freshman. So so your team went 10 and 0. My senior year team went 10 and 0. Jared's like senior year team went 10 and 0. So backwards, 78. Backwards hat <laughs> But. You know, but, you know, I, I searched for, uh, you know, Eddie, because Eddie was my go-to guy. You know, he was my go-to guy on a lot of stuff, you know, for, you know, from sports to mm -hmm. life to whatever. Yep. And not because he knew it all, but because he experienced a lot and he made a lot of mistakes, too, you know. So he knew what to yeah. do and not to do. Yep. But, uh, you know, one of the things he always said was, you know, it, it's not about the T-shirt, you know. It, mm -hmm. It's just not. It's not yep. about the T-shirt. Can he do it? Yes. Is it better for him? Nope. No. No. So, you know, I, I, I think one thing that I, I may have a little bit of regret because I hear little Matt talking about Eddie's stories and where Eddie's giving him advice. 
and I don't know that Eddie and I had that relationship to where I would go to Eddie. Like when it when I was with Eddie, we were just acting stupid, and I was just doing stupid stuff to make him laugh. And uh, that was like every time we got together. So I, I, you know, it's I'm a little bummed out that I never went to him for some of his wisdom. And I think part of that is because I, I just assumed there would be more time, I guess. But uh, uh, you know, I just uh, uh, I I regret that I didn't have those types of conversations with him. They were always stupid. They were always yelling at him for something or making fun of him for something or him ruining some of my stuff. And and it was just always just just stupid <coughs> conversations. But. Uh, you're right, Eddie. Eddie had in in his in his short life, he had a, a 90 year old's life experiences. <laughs> oh, most good and bad. Yeah. Most definitely. I mean, <laughs> it was good to pick his brain. Yeah. You know, it was good to pick his brain because, but you know, always at the end, he would always tell you, but hey, you know. He wouldn't he, tell you what to do. He would yeah, let he, you he figure would, it out. He would tell you like, but hey, you get, you do what you do what you want to yeah. do or what you think you need to do. Mm-hmm. Just remember that's what you picked. Yeah, <coughs> and and I think that's one thing that that I do remember about Eddie is is uh, you know Eddie's choices. Eddie always lived by them. You know, I mean, he 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 experienced it, and he never. I don't ever remember him talking about regretting. He may have, but he what? never ver- verbalized it to to me. But he did to me. We had one conversation. Eddie? Yeah, he sat there and said, "Life's regrets." He did speak of one. Yeah. Which would have been sissy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He did say that. Yeah, I know, like, talking about Eddie not ever pushing pushing anybody to do anything they didn't want to do. Going into my freshman year, I was I was debating whether to play football or not. And I was nervous about it, didn't know what to expect, didn't want to play. A couple of days before two days started, I decided, well, let me go and try it out. So we started playing and started practicing. But Eddie never said, you know, you're dumb for not playing, you know, you should play. He never said anything. He just, I would talk to him about it, but he would just, he would just listen. And before the season started, I ended up making varsity. And he looked at me, he goes, and you see, and you didn't want to play. And then another story to go along with that, we used to live in that white house up on the hill across from the Kindles. And Dad's bedroom was the only one that had air conditioning. Actually, we were at the bottom of the hill. At the bottom of the hill? <laughs> You're right, at the bottom of the hill. I thought it was the top of the hill. <laughs> but uh, no, You were at the top of the hill because uh, Dad maybe made tea for y'all every day because y'all had practice. So you were at the top of the hill. And we, uh, we got to the house, and we had morning practice, and we were going to go rest. And we always went to Dad's room because Dad, Dad had the, the window unit, and it was cooler in there. So we went and laid in, laid in Dad's bed, and I started getting a cramp in my calf. And Eddie jumps on top of me to keep me from getting up to stretch my calf. <laughs> and he held me there for I don't know how yeah. long. <laughs> That's how, that was him. Eddie. He let me get up. <laughs> he always did that stupid thing that with his elbow where he'd tell you he'd, he'd hurt his elbow. Oh, yeah. And when you get close enough to look at his elbow, he'd slap you in the top of the forehead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were dumb to look every single every time. Every single time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will say, though, you're, you are a little wrong on what you just said. Because the most pressure that I ever got to smoke a joint... <laughs> It was from Eddie and Lori Valverde. I did not smoke it. I have never smoked. But that was like, man, that was just like, come on, just do it. I was like, I, I, I was scared I would like it, and I was scared of my daddy. So I didn't do it. Ed, you know, it's, it's funny because to me, Eddie was the fun, you know. And uh, uh, when Nina and I got started dating and got married and we'd have things at the house or we'd have something, you know. Nina would always want to write down, well, who are we going to invite? Oh, you want him and, there. And my first five or, or my first four were you guys, you know, Eddie, Joe, Barbara, Vidal. And outside of that, I was like, I'll invite whoever you want after that. You're you know? talking about, you talking about when you ruined everything? Which time? Because that would have been the first time, the first time we were all single at one time. <laughs> oh, and, and, and we're already making plans to go out and do something. And you were and y'all, I were y'all all single or y- y'all were all dumped? No, both. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And then you were you were dumped. <laughs> you were dumped since uh. birth. <laughs> so you and I were going to Jason Bolin, and you were like, "Oh, that's right, Corpus, right?" Yeah, I mean, I'm talking to this girl, and I'm like, "Are you serious, dude?" Actually, she was talking to me. <laughs> I was like, "You're breaking up the band." Like this I is the first that. time we're all single. <laughs> And now we're all the losers, and you're the winner. <laughs> and now, li- little did I know, y'all 
ultimately y'all just wanted to hang out with her anyway and she she told me all the time uh uh, you need to go hang out with your brothers and sisters. I'm like, what for? They they want to hang out with you anyway. It's not She's me. She's a lot more fun than you are. <laughs> She's yeah. a lot more fun, but I'm yeah. a lot more responsible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we. I think that we definitely like that day. We all we didn't just you know one of, the, one of the things about sports and 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 our family is that was what that was our thing. You know, I remember. When Eddie and I would, when Eddie and I wouldn't get along, and, you know, siblings fight and argue, whatever. Oh, I remember one fight. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. We, we can talk about that fight later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we'd argue, but I always knew that football season came around or baseball season came around. Eddie and I, we would never argue during those two those two seasons, the football season or Common baseball goal. season. We would never argue. We always got along. And and I always and I always look forward to that. Being able to play with your brother like that was was. was was pretty cool yeah i think that was like uh you know we watched matthew our nephew matthew his season and the pitcher and the third baseman were siblings and i was telling you about this yeah. i think there's they're junior and sophomore yeah so how awesome is that two sisters playing ball together which same thing with you guys yeah. I, mean, I would love to have had that you know just you know one was a you know, y'all were a year apart yeah that was awesome. Oh, I want. I wanted that for Matt and Jared so yeah. bad. Me and Vidal almost you know? had that, but he stood on the tracks <laughs> when the train was coming through. George didn't have sumo wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have had that, but somebody wasn't good enough to start. So. Hey, I inter- one-handed intercepted interception. You were. You that? fell and down, and the ball fell on top of you. Boom! Snag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you thought it's it was a brown. Yeah. You thought it was a brownie <laughs> falling out of the sky. <laughs> You know, there was one time y'all talking about fights. So, you know, I started drinking at a real early age. And so one time we were drinking and uh, and so it was it was I was with all the adults, right? And it was after a softball game. And uh Eddie convinced dad into letting me drink, right? And he's like, Dad, are you serious? Like, you know, I can take him home right now, but he's just going to go with his friends and do the same thing anyway. So, you know, whatever. So anyway, I stay and uh, we're drinking or whatever. And uh, so a few days, like a few weeks later, or, you know, I forgot where we we're at. And uh, we we're drinking and, and man, I don't even remember what, what, what started the whole thing, but it was like a family thing, you know, I can't remember where we we're at. And, uh, and I got silly, and I remember that. Did you throw up? Because you always threw up. No. Well, I mean, you go hard, dude. Like, I mean. You're going hard. You're going to go 110% <laughs> or you're not going to go at all. So anyway, we, we were at this get-together, and um, I was so mad at one of y'all. I can't even remember. It's probably you, Barbara. Probably but Because <laughs> yeah. I think everybody at this table is put their hands on you at, at one point or another i never had a sister <laughs> but but anyway i remember and, eddie and just for the record i put my hands last I, I remember eddie yeah so i remember eddie pulled me to the side and he's like hey you need to cut your shit because i'm fixing it and eddie doesn't lose his cool uh, and he's like i'm fixing you don't want to get it you don't want to get yeah we, yeah and, and, get and i remember like like i cut my shit out yeah right? yeah but you know and, and my my beef wasn't with eddie but I remember he was like, don't even try it. Now, mind you, my brother Ray was a beast, okay? He was a total beast. Did Ray grow up in George West? No, he grew up in, in uh, yeah, he grew up in, in George while. West for yeah, a while. He lived there for a while. And, uh, when, you know, and I, I seen the guy knock two guys out in a row, one with one hand, one in the other. Okay, Ray was a beast. Now, I've challenged Ray. I've challenged Ray. The reason I challenged Ray is because I knew when Ray hit me, I was going to get knocked out. So I wasn't scared to get knocked out. But when Eddie told me to behave, I was like, man, this guy, he's not the knockout type. He's going to make this shit hurt. <laughs> so I was like, no, I better not. Like, I'd rather just wake up and wonder what happened than like, think to myself, why, yeah. you know, why did I just not keep my mouth shut? Yeah. I, did. I mean, he didn't get like that often, but no, he, he did it and he told you, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you better stop. And you cut your shit. Yep. For sure, I remember the the one time I remember him getting mad at me, and I was little, I, and he wasn't mad like he wanted to fight or anything. He just was pissed. He brought Sissy over, and I guess they had just started dating, and it was his birthday, and I didn't have anything for him, 
Eddie was always dark. And uh, uh, I found a bottle of suntan lotion in the bathroom. <laughs> so I, I wrapped it and I gave it to him in front of Sissy. And I, I remember him <laughs> opening it with a smile. And when he saw it was suntan lotion, he looked at me like he wanted to just murder me. <laughs> I think I went into my room and cried by myself because I thought he was going to hurt me. But <laughs> You mean like when he made that comment and you went to the room and you cried? Which comment? He's made a lot of comments. And Joe had to go to the room and tell you, hey, he was just playing. Was it a fat joke? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think we were playing like Candyland or something. Because remember, we love to play board games. Was that when he left Matt on the toilet? Yes. (laughs) And he was like, ah. He looked in there, and Matt's legs were, he was like seven years old or five years old or yeah, four. Cause or Matt had to wear those, yeah, because yeah, Matt, Matt had to wear those big goofy shoes, remember? The clown shoes. Yeah, right. so they were weighing his legs down, so his That's legs right. were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie was, Eddie was, uh, Eddie was, uh, he was easily distracted from his parental duties at times, I think. Yeah, he wasn't the best daddy, but yet they <laughs> loved him. <laughs> well, I think everybody loved him. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that's one thing that, that I always found interesting was even even people who had just met Eddie already liked Eddie. Like oh, when yeah. people Nina's people would be introduced to him, uh, you know, right away they already liked him. Yeah. You know? And then before, before I knew it, friends of mine that I knew he didn't know, he was already friends with him on Facebook. And it's like, well, what are you trying to yeah, do? Yeah, I, I think the thing about Eddie, Eddie was just, he was such a good guy, and he didn't judge, he didn't talk about people. It was what it was. You were friends, and that was it. You met Eddie, y'all were friends, and he yeah. he never, I mean, he just did not talk about people. He just, that's, that was just not his cup of tea, you know, it was like, he wasn't going to judge, he wasn't going to talk. One one thing that was aggravating. He never judged. Ne- no, he really didn't. And one, one thing that was aggravating at times, but... In in retrospect, I'm kind of like it was pretty cool. It was Eddie never had any damn money. He never had it. He never <laughs> pitched in. He never. But at the same time, people who had less than Eddie, Eddie was would take care of in yeah. some way, in some capacity. You know, it was giving him giving them something that he owned, or or even if it was money, maybe that's why he didn't have it. Or you know? time. Or he time. gave a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely did that. So I walked out of a restaurant, and the lady goes, here's your ticket. And I was like, oh, no, ma'am, my brother is playing. The guy that you were sitting with? And I was like, yes, ma'am. Here, you walked out the door. I was like, <laughs> yeah, he ordered drinks, and he'd leave. <laughs> he walked out. The, we pitched yeah, in for he, fights. Remember when we pitched in for fights that one day? We all pitched in for McGregor, fights. yeah. And the money was sitting on the counter. He walked out the door, and he took it. <laughs> he, put it he put 20 bucks on the table. I put 20 bucks on the table. He left with 40 bucks. And then Barbara calls me, you bastard, you took my money. So I didn't take your money. I said, Eddie took it. I go get it from him. He's got my money, too. <laughs> I remember one fight. We watched the other. Eddie says, hey, you have your money? And I said, yeah, I gave it to him. He turns around. I gave it to one of y'all. He goes, here's my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when uh, we go to the restaurant, and then he, you could tell when Eddie got drunk. Like, it was time for him to go. And he'd be like, one more round. And he'd order a round. And then he'd be like, all right, I'm going to go to the restroom. And then be like, damn, he's been in the restroom a long <laughs> time. Here. It wasn't about till the second or third time that we were like, that son of a bitch ain't even here, man. Well, yeah, he's we, gone. But, but, but yet we always wanted yeah, him there. Yeah, we already knew. Right? We already knew. <laughs> you knew it was going to happen, but you still wanted him there. It wouldn't be the same like, without him. I mean, yeah. He, I remember we'd go to, uh, he'd, he'd go like, hey, uh, we're going to go to the TR bar. You know, I'm going to go to the TR bar or wherever, right? And uh, I'd be like, nah, I can't go. He's like, why not? I don't have any extra money. Because I already know I'm going to have to pay for me and you. Yeah. Dude, I got it. And I was like, yeah, right. And anyway, I'd go. And, of course, we'd walk in. Yeah. And it'd be like, you know, I would walk in and, and everybody knows me, right? So I'd walk in and everybody would say hi. But then Eddie would, I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but he would walk in like five, six seconds behind me. And man, you talk about all the older women that went to high school in <laughs> Live Oak County. It was like the prom king just walked in. Yep. Like somebody left the gate open at the ranch and here <laughs> they all come. <laughs> Eddie and I had like a rolling 40 to $60, right? He'd stay the night at my house when he'd go to the bar in TR. So I would leave the 60 bucks in the drawer 
He would take it and go have a. That's why he didn't need you that night because he had my sixty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> then he put the sixty bucks back, and then, and then they're like, "Hey, I need some money," so you put it back over there for him. So he would go have a good time. He was already in his fifties, and we'd go to the Tilted Kilt to go watch UFC fights. <laughs> it was every UFC fight that we that that we could make, we'd go make. And uh, I'd, al- I'd always get there late because I'm notorious for being late. Matt, yeah, you are. <laughs> and uh, I'd always walk in, and there would be these cute little young girls. And I say young girls, but they're in their 20s. Uh, short skirts, you know, crop top tops, big boobs. And I'd walk in, and I'd be like, is there a real old dude here drinking Budweiser and peppermints? And they're like, oh, yeah, he's right over here. <laughs> they knew exactly who it was. Yeah, when he started that drinking beer and peppermints, I was like, dude, what is that? And he goes, no, you got to try it. <laughs> so every every time, a, every time a waitress would walk over real cute and he'd order or whatever, and then every time he'd walk off, he'd go, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were talking about the other day. Joe and I were talking about that. We would go on bike rides, <clears throat> and we would stop to get gas. <laughs> Everybody get off their motorcycle and he look at me, he bring his sunglasses down a little bit, he look at you and go <laughs> And he already spotted one. I was like <laughs> this, this guy was bad. Uh, you know, it, it's funny when uh, when him and Sissy had first gotten together and there you'd be walking somewhere or a softball tournament or and there'd be a real pretty girl coming the other direction. And I'd watch him, and he'd always go and grab Sissy to give her a big hug and kiss, and he'd turn her back to the direction of the girl that was walking, you know, their way, and he just kind of <laughs> take a peek. And I was like, that guy was always up to something, always up to something. <laughs> when he had, they had uh, Matthew already, and uh, we'd go play softball at the same field. Matthew would hang out with me, and when Eddie, when Matthew would see Eddie at the field. He's like, hey, Dad. And he's like, don't call me Dad. I'm your big brother. Don't forget, I'm your big brother. <laughs> I'm your big brother. <laughs> <laughs> that that guy typical up. Eddie. Typical Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it's funny because uh, uh, a lot of the, the people that you've met through Eddie uh, really loved Eddie. And, you know, one, one thing that one thing that I always mention is... is uh, how Ed Vidal touched on it earlier, how Vidal, Eddie gave everybody, you know, his time, you know. And one thing that I, I always kind of struggled with when I was younger was, you know, Eddie's Eddie may not be available in places that he probably needed to be available at, you know. But at the end of the day, when you see how many people loved Eddie and yeah. and had respect for Eddie and they cared about Eddie, you know, it, it kind of puts things in perspective where you're like, okay, well, you know, he was he wasn't just out being a dipshit, you know, uh, he was affecting people and he was, he was building relationships and, and and touching people, you know, and uh, I don't think I think it'd be a lot better if if a lot of us did that kind of thing as well. Well, you know? one of the ways I learned to multitask <clears throat> was from Eddie, you know, because he always had a lot of things going on. And if I could learn, in, you know, anything from him at the time it was multitasking you know and so if he didn't know how to do it he knew somebody that knew how to do it or he knew somebody that knew but somebody that could get it done so i learned to multitask through him and um you know uh i remember when i was dating connie at the time and she was in in uh, in the valley and you know, I was already back here working and she was having trouble, like, you know, getting the water turned on and all this different, you know, like, I think it was like three or four different things. And Eddie was in the valley at the time. And uh, she had tried calling these people and they kept giving her the runaround and all these, you know, different things. And then she had some furniture in the car she couldn't get off. And so I call Eddie and I'm like, hey, this is blah, blah. He's like, where, you know, where she lives, she lives here, whatever uh give me five minutes i don't i don't know but let me find out and he'd get it done you know and then he would call me back and he'd be like hey have her call this number talk to so-and-so whatever like he always knew somebody Mm -hmm. you know they would get the job done and going back to what you said about him always helping somebody i remember it was jared's uh junior year what yeah junior year when uh going into jared's senior year uh no, no no going into jared's junior year when uh of baseball when eddie passed and uh 
we're in Taft and this guy walks up to me and he goes uh, he starts talking to me and he goes hey uh, that kid on third he goes uh, he's really good I said yeah he's alright is that your boy and I said yeah that's my boy he goes I knew it because I saw him he goes I knew it he goes, this is he goes, you wouldn't happen to be he goes I know his name's Zuniga he goes but you wouldn't happen to be related to Eddie Molina would you and I said yeah actually that's my brother and he goes man you know he just the guy started crying and he's like you know your brother was a hell of a guy you know he was a hell of a man this and that and uh he said your brother got me a job yeah when nobody else would give me a job your brother got me a job and uh he said i applied and you know nobody was hiring and he pulled a lot of strings and he barely knew me but he knew that he took my word that you know i was a good employee this and that like he gave me a chance when nobody else would give me a chance he goes and i just want to he goes i didn't get the opportunity to see him or go to the funeral but i want you to know i said well my dad's right over there and uh and he went and talked to dad and stuff like that and uh you know it was good for him to tell dad even though he didn't get to tell eddie goodbye you know the the favors that he did for people you know <clears throat> and uh he was a very trustworthy person you know i mean he was the type of person that eddie was the type of person that he like we talked about earlier he really didn't judge anybody he would rather get burned before he judged you than not judged you yeah you know? i think that's a good way to put that i, I you know and I think a lot of it is just the way you guys grew up, you know. <clears throat> there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of opportunity, and and you when you guys got it, it was uh, you had to take advantage of it, you know. So I think that part of there were people that that I'd seen and that I'd met in, at services, and I always wondered how how in the hell does Eddie know this person, you know? And there were people. And I'm a I'm a judgmental son of a bitch, and that's that's a terrible character flaw. Eddie was not. You know, and there was people that I would see, and I'm like, how in the hell does Eddie know this person? And that's kind of one thing that I took I took from losing Eddie was to to work on that whole judgmental part of me. You know, give people an opportunity, listen to people, because that's what he did. You know, and uh, uh, that's the type of person that he was. You know, and I think that's why he had such a big impact. You know. One thing, one thing that that I found amazing was Eddie filled the church up twice in two days, you know, full of people, <clears throat> and it's like it makes me kind of look, you know. I always think that I I I'm, I have a I'm, I have a I'm, I'm a good guy and <clears throat> I, I have good character and you know when I see that and I'm like I I see how many people came to Eddie to see him to pay respects to him. It it uh it makes me reevaluate the way how I treat people, you know. I'm not filling no church up, and I'm not doing it twice, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but he did. You know, that's the thing. You know, we, like you said, there's so many people that came up to us, came up to me, came up to me, and you know, would introduce themselves and say, you know, I played ball with Eddie, or you know, I worked with Eddie, whatever. However, Eddie knew them, you know, whatever avenue he took, that you know, these people knew Eddie. He. Uh, he knew so many people and i looked around and i was like man i don't know three quarters of the people that are here you know but eddie knew so many people and like he said you know he just went out of his way for them and and he touched so many lives you know and i look back now and i think about what like what you're saying how many you know he filled that church twice and i and i think to myself man you know if, if i have half of the people that my brother had i, I would be happy you know but he's just and, and i've done the same thing you know like you're saying I, tr I try not to be judgmental i try to give people you know there's different philosophies that I, that I try to live my life by and and try to take qualities from from losing eddie that i didn't have before and eddie just touched so many lives you know and, and you could see it it was genuine you know there's people that showed up at his funeral that had no idea who they were Oh yeah, if Eddie did something for somebody, even though he didn't know them, he would still do it because you asked him to. You know? There's a you know, there's a song um man, I'm probably getting this wrong because I just 
stood up and forgot, but I want to say it's Waylon Jennings. But uh, he says, uh, he says, why are you, why are you doing it? And he says, because you asked me to, you know. And uh, that's that was Eddie, you know. Even though he didn't know the person, but you were asking him to do it as a favor to you. Eddie would go away, go out of his way, because you asked him. Yeah. You know. And uh, if you meant something to Eddie, and you asked him for a favor, he was going to get it done. Bottom line, you know. You know, he he had a uh, he had the ability to know the person he was talking to and talk to them in a manner that they could relate. I, I remember listening to him talk to his bosses from Houston and then talking to the the truck driver and it's two different types of conversations you know but he had rapport with them you know and he built that rapport it, w it was different types of rapport it was a rapport that he had built with his boss a rapport that he built with you know his drivers and they all loved him you know and and uh there's not very many people that i think have the ability to communicate that well with so many types of people you know and uh eddie was capable of it man he really was i know i know when eddie was down in the valley i don't remember which company he was working for but he's down in the valley and i drove Coastal. down there so we could go have probably yeah we went i went down there to the valley to go have lunch with him and just from talking to the people that he worked with i mean they loved him they, they thought he was the best boss you know they enjoyed working for him but the thing was is eddie was a good boss to work for but you could tell that he was that that he wasn't the type of boss that was going to let you get away with stuff without bringing it to your attention that hey you're screwing up to try to fix it not because it was going to make him look bad but because he knew the repercussions of hey you're not doing your job yeah and and he would correct it he, he wouldn't mess around with anything like that and eddie had character that we as siblings probably didn't see because we saw the the eddie that would you know screw up here and screw up there and 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 just cut up and laugh and have a good time but eddie had character around his employees he he, he could be professional when he needed to be yeah well he was in his he was always a supervisor for a reason yeah you know and, and one of the things too was you know and he became a supervisor young yeah yeah very young yeah, I remember he used to, he started, I don't know, I kind of missed out a little bit, but he started off washing the trucks. He yeah. worked yeah. nights wa washing yeah, he, trucks. Yeah, we, we worked the racks, yeah. you know, yeah. we wash them out and stuff like that. And I think a lot of it had to do, which, you know, was another note that I took, was like at work, people were always like, you know, why, why do you hire lifers as your orderlies? Like nobody wants to mess with lifers because typically lifers don't care. I mean, what are they, what are you going to tell them? How are you going to threaten them to do something when they're in there for life? They don't care. And I would always hire lifers. And they would turn out to be the best orderlies I ever had. And then by the end of the year, because you could only have a certain inmate on your detail for 10 months, you know, for a year, and then you'd have to get rid of them because they don't want them to get, you know, you don't want to get complacent. So what I would do, 10 months, I'd fire that orderly for a month, and then I'd rehire them, and I'd get them back another year. And everybody would try to take my orderlies. But I remember like thinking about Eddie, and Eddie would give people a purpose, you know? And so going back to what Joe was saying, is that he was a great supervisor because, you know, not that he he, you know, led with the iron fist, was because he gave him a purpose and he you know he was good at his job he was a good leader and people didn't want to disappoint him you know like that's my boss i don't want to disappoint my boss you know and when you got that kind of rapport with people that they don't want to disappoint you i mean they'll move mountains for you you know and that, that's one thing that's interesting because i agree with you I, I think you i think you're exactly right but i don't know I don't know where he learned that. Maybe it was just life experiences, but you know, to to be able to to see that and learn it and put it into practice with other people and know how to put it in practice with certain people, you know, because everybody's different. I think you figure out what works though, and you know, you can have ten employees and you can't treat them all the same. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you got to talk to one a certain way, the other one at. you can talk to this way. And you know, you George Fernandez. That. George Fernandez showed up at his funeral. Mm -hmm. You know. And George Fernandez helped him get his foot in the door yeah. at Mission Transport. Mm -hmm. 
and George Fernandez was like, hey, there's this kid. And I know the only position you have is to wash trucks. I don't think he's a wash truck kind of guy, but he's going to be a supervisor one day. Yeah. No, you he, know? And he was very smart. And little did I know at the time, little did anybody know at the time, because George Fernandez was a very keep to himself kind of guy. Was extremely sick. Yeah. And basically said, when I talked to him outside the church, he was not going to miss Eddie's funeral. Yeah. You know? And, uh, well, you know, I- it, it, it just like, and he, you know, he, and he told me the whole story again about how he yeah. saw something in Eddie. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and back then in the day, you know, George's voice swung a lot, you know? So I started off in Diamond Shamrock, so I dealt with both drivers for Mission Transport. And I remember sitting down at the desk, and I was just surrounded by truck drivers behind me. They were waiting to unload. And one of the guys walks in, and I remember his last name was Seragura. Segura? Segura. And they asked Segura, hey, what kind of load did Eddie Molina give you today? And so Segura's like, oh, that son of a bitch. This and that. Starts talking about Eddie. <laughs> And he all knew these, it, he did. All these guys are laughing, right? <laughs> so uh, then they say, oh, hey, Sagura, this is Eddie's sister, Barbara Molina. <laughs> and he looks at me, shakes my head, and walks out. <laughs> so along the way, I'm sure he pissed off a lot of people, but oh, that's just kind of, that's just the way it is. And, and, and that's that's part of, uh, you know, part of uh, this is, is <clears throat> sharing stories that are fun, that are interesting. You know, Eddie was, Eddie was a an outstanding guy at the end of the day he really was but Eddie w- w- was extremely flawed and Eddie made some mistakes yeah. and you know part of that is is part of living life and learning from it you know and and a lot of times when you are making mistakes and learning from them you're affecting other people that you love you know but you know Eddie at the end of the day was a hell of a guy you know right. and uh, and deeply deeply missed you know i think for like for all of us i mean not only did we lose our sibling that day i think we all lost our person well he he was our he was you know i always tell people dad's the nucleus of our family and eddie it was the nucleus of the siblings you know that was that was our person i mean i think i speak for all of us when i say that was each of us I mean, he was our person. That's who you called. That's yeah, who you as long to. as you weren't in a in a relationship with him, you were golden. <laughs> 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 but, you know, Eddie had what I always say about dad is Eddie, Eddie had the amistad, you know, Eddie had the amistad. That's and dad has it, you know, where you, and that's why he filled up a church twice because he had that amistad, you know, and and to have that is a great thing. It's an amazing thing, and you can only wish to have something like that. But Eddie had it, you yep. know, and and it's just something that Dad passed on to him, you know. And, and I remember one time, you know, I remember one time me and Dad, Dad went super off on me, right? Like super off on me. Was this when you killed the pig? No, this was <laughs> when uh, this was when uh, he just couldn't understand why I was, you know, being a kid and. But I never blamed Dad for anything, and it ate Dad up. And uh, anyway, he went super off on me, and, and we talked later or whatever. And uh, he had mentioned that, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't go get you or whatever or whatever. You know, and he didn't go get Eddie either. But he knew deep down inside that it would hurt Grandma for him to go get Eddie. Oh, Grandma yeah. loved Eddie. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he told me, he said, he said in hindsight... Should I should I have told Eddie no? I know you want to live with your grandma, but you're my son. You're coming with me. You need to be with us. But it was actually a good thing, you know. Joe and I would have been miserable if had he told Eddie that. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I would have been miserable too. Yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day, him being with grandma was a blessing. You know, I remember when grandma fell that day that it rained and cut her leg. At the, I walked on her. The porch. I was walking her into the door when she fell. It was after Eddie's football. And that's so why she fell. If Eddie was holding, because her, you were walking fall. dad in the house when dad fell. Remember? He in, did the, twice. in the in the walking carport. Dad in the house. In the carport. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Hey, anyway. don't, don't walk me in anything. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Ever. Dude, we're gonna cut you in half in quarters to carry you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love to see. And call the county. <laughs> 
But anyway, so we're pushing about an hour on this, and and again, we may we may do this again. Uh, I like telling stories about Eddie, and there's probably some that we've missed. You, you know, know what I miss about Eddie? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Do it, no. Is I can remember just like just Monday through, Monday through Friday he was mine. I was going to call him. We were going to talk every day. The weekends I let him have them to him. You know, sometimes not always. But it was like you could call him. You could ask him, Hey Eddie, what about this? Or he knew everything, or he knew a little bit about everything. Or like, Hey Eddie, do you remember we were kids and we did this? Because this guy right here, Joe. He don't remember nothing. I don't remember anything. <laughs> so like, I'll ask Joe. Hey, no, Joe, that guy this? stands up and forgets everything. Too many yeah. concussions. Wait, Joe, do you remember the comeback play? No. When he's playing football? No. We played football all the time, and it was like, Eddie, which way do we run? And Eddie, because I could never remember which way to run. Eddie's like, you're going to go that way. It was the comeback play. You run down, you come back, throw it at you. See? That's why I've been saying that's when he told, I don't remember nothing. That's when he told Joe, you don't have to do anything but exist in the three seconds it takes you to give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> was it in the right? See, that's why I don't remember anything. Right. That's why I forget it. I choose to forget it. But that's what it was. It was Eddie to the right, Eddie to the left, Eddie up the middle. <laughs> You know what anyway, sucks, I'm Joe? Sorry, you know no, what no. sucks, Joe, is that you were a hell of an athlete. You just weren't worth the shit compared to Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, well, well he, at least I came in second place, not third or fourth. Mm. Or fourth no, fourth. no, fourth and fifth. Fourth and fifth. I'm sorry. I and you third, had a torn hamstring. Third. Don't forget that. <laughs> and I still beat you. You know, <laughs> it's funny. And you know, talk about. I'm sorry. Talk about t- hamstrings. I remember one day Eddie hey, calls me. He was me. so mad you beat him in long jump. <laughs> he was so pissed. He pulled me to the side and he's like, there's no way. There's no way he could have done that. I remember Eddie calls me up one day and he says, hey, you remember he said a few months ago when you had a pulled hamstring and I kept kicking you in the, in the back of your leg and I said, yeah. He goes, I just want to call you and tell you that I'm really sorry. <laughs> he goes, I'm so sorry because I should have never done that. He goes, and I promise I'll never do it again. And we're on the phone and I said, You've got to pull a handspring, don't you? And we're going to get together and play, do something that weekend. And he says, no, no, I don't. And I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, um, I forgot how little Matt was at the house. And little Matt, I guess, was was in high school or something, maybe a freshman, or he'd been exercising or running. And he was in good shape. He was in eighth grade. Was he in eighth grade? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was talking trash. So that, naturally, Eddie starts talking trash. So. Like, well, talking go. about my mat, right? Yeah. yeah. So they go to run a forty-yard dash out in the street. Nah, it that. was in San Antonio. Like, yeah, everyone in came into town yeah. for this. It was at the house, and was, uh, yeah, and Dad even drove to San Antonio to watch it. And Dad was like, you know, I think little Matt's gonna take Eddie. <laughs> I was like, I oh, don't know, Dad. Forty-yard dash, Eddie beats him. <laughs> Eddie turns around. At the end, Eddie turns around and, and, and he? yes, and he runs backwards. <laughs> and he tells me. I can't believe Uncle Eddie beat me. I said, I can't, dummy, because you challenged him to a 60-yard dash and not an 800-meter yard <laughs> yeah. run, or 800-meter yeah. run. Hey, that, that, was the, that was the thing about Eddie was if uh, if Mother Teresa was going to challenge Eddie to Bible reading, Eddie was going to try and whoop her ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to brush up on her. Uh-huh. That's just the way he was. All right, so tell me, Barbara, exactly why you named this, this uh, uh, covered area what you named it? What is it called again? Secabo. And why did you name it that? Because um, Eddie was in the hospital several years ago. I think he had vertigo, and Joe made a video and sent it to him. And he called me and he asked me. He was, "Did you watch the video Joe Joe made?" I said, "No, I didn't." And Joe was like making fun of him for like three minutes. And it's like Pontele, Ponte, Ponte, how you say that? Ponte los pantalones. Ponte los pantalones. Quítate ese vestido. And he's basically telling him to go home and. Drink a drink some beer, eat a hamburger. And he kept saying, "Yeah, se acabó." <laughs> and one day I was watching La Reina del Sur, and I see while they're arguing. Were you watching it with Dad? No, I I see that it's called acabó, and I was like, "It's acabó, not se acabó." And I and he says se acabó. So this place right here is named se acabó. Because of you Joe know, screwing it up. Because of Joe, Eddie, <laughs> and then we have our little shooting range over here. It's called the M5 shooting range. Because my brother loves shoe guns. Yeah. And you know, five is why? For the mol- five Molinas. Five Molinas. Bears kids. Bears babies. Hey, that day that Eddie was in the hospital, and uh, he was really sick, and he didn't know what was wrong with him, and it ended up being high blood pressure, and he got vertigo, and the doctor came and told him he had a... Uh, <laughs> leukemia or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We need to went to the hospital. They screwed up. They told him he had some kind of this, like cancer yeah, or something. Yeah, the doctor comes in and tells him it's like some form of cancer. Yeah. And Eddie's like, 
you know, like, oh, shit, you know, like, this is it. This is the big one, Elizabeth. I'm coming to yeah. see you. And so then later, the doctor comes in, and he's like, sir, I'm so sorry. He's <laughs> like, I'm really sorry. He's like, you don't have... It was like one of the rarest cancers that you get, and like you're done. Like you have it. So his doctor was the black dude from The Simpsons. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's like, I mean, it was a bad cancer. Like yeah. it, it was like you're done, right? <clears throat> so he comes back and he apologizes to Eddie. <laughs> and like, Eddie, I gotta go tell God yeah. that he has it. <laughs> And Eddie's so witty, you know. And the other guy was like, "Thank God, it's just yeah. blood pressure." <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible. And that's what Eddie tells the doctor. You know, the doctor keeps apologizing, and Eddie's like, "Sir, we're good. We're good." He goes, "I'm just worried about you having to go tell the other guy that it's not. <laughs> it's not high blood pressure. That's so bad, but so funny yep. at the same time." Yep. That picture of Eddie on the hospital bed shooting the finger. Me and Nina went to go see him, <laughs> and. Uh, it turned out that it was blood pressure. This is too low or something. Yeah. And uh, I said, what happened? And Eddie said, well, they put me on blood pressure medicine three times a day. So I don't want to take it three times a day. So I just take all three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you idiot. Was you all can't take all time. three of them at one time. Yeah. For being so smart, you're dumb. <laughs> oh, man. It was, it was something else. But anyway, anybody got anything else they want to share? Joe? No, I think we're good. I mean, we, we, we're always going to miss them, like Barbara said earlier. You know, and she and I have talked and we said it before, it's just, it, it's not ever the same. I mean, we've got us four and, you know, I love you guys like nobody's business. You know, but it's just, you know, when one of us is missing, it's just not the same. And we make the best of it each and every day. But, you know, he, he's 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 a big part of what we had going. And, you know, it's just, it's just he's just going to be missed. That's all there is to it. Well, one thing that I, I, I think I struggled missing Eddie daily. But I think where I, I struggle the most is on days like this when we're all together and he's not yeah. here. Uh, I know shortly after when he passed, we went to the valley and I had such a hard time being there. And I had a hard time being there because we were short, you know, yeah. we were missing one. And I felt terrible because part of me felt like I, I don't even want to be here, you know, because it, it was it was we were short one yep. you know and uh as time goes on and i get older i guess i learn to deal with it a little bit more and i learn to appreciate you guys more than than what i did that day because i was being pretty selfish but uh at the same time it's a huge void man it's a huge friggin' void i know barbara had sent that that one meme or something that said something to the effect and i i think it, the same thing goes with like when we lost nina's mom you know god takes those that make the biggest impact i think that's what that thing said that you sent and when you when I look at it like that, I'm like, he certainly did, you know. Uh, but I mean, we, like you said, we keep we keep moving forward, and uh, uh, we keep his memory alive. You know, I, I try and post a picture of him once a month on the 11th, and because uh, of that damn Coco movie, you know, Coco <laughs> says as, as long as you don't forget him, they'll be around forever, you know. And uh, I think that's one of the important things that we need to keep in mind is as long as we as long as we don't forget him, he'll be around forever. Yeah, I think that saying says if, if your presence doesn't make an impression, your absence will make a difference. Yeah. And you know, one of, like Barbara touched earlier, one of the one of the hardest things that I dealt with for a long time is is wanting to pick up the phone to call him. And and every once in a while, it's crazy. You know, it's been a little over two years, but every once in a while, I still have that urge. You know, wanting to pick up the phone to call him. And I remember Raquel asked me one day, you know, does does it ever get easier? And, and I told her, I said, you know, it, it doesn't. You know, you live with it, and you still think about them. And things come up that, that, you know, make you think about them. And it brings those feelings right back up again. You know, you may tuck them away to where they don't come up every day, but a situation happens or something happens in your life, and, 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 you, and you think about your brother. And, and all those feelings, you know, of losing him come right back up again. And, and, you know, like you said, you cope with it. But it it doesn't really get easier. You just don't try not to deal with it as often as you did when, in the beginning. Yeah. And, you know, like, the UFC was a big thing with Eddie, you know. Oh, yeah. Eddie okay. loved the UFC. And, uh, and, like, it's hard, like, and the only reason I remember is because it's, it's tattooed on my arm. But uh, one of my good buddies from work, uh, Sid, he lost his sister on the 8th of February. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's it's like, you know, he told me, like, she was my go-to. 
you know and um and it's funny because even to this day like what joe said about wanting to call him like i'll see a good pay-per-view card and i'm like oh shit like look at this pay-per-view card on ufc and i start texting and i'm like well who what am i texting you know you forget yeah. like like time doesn't matter you know like yeah time they say time heals all but it it takes so much time for everybody you know and when someone leaves an impression in your life it, it's it's even longer and uh, he left a lot of good impressions and some bad but you know at the end of the day when you can uh you can think back and love somebody more than 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 what you know they hurt you or what you can forgive them for it, it's a good thing you know and eddie was a eddie was a good dude you know and uh i'm just happy that that i got to come down here because i remember uh we went to the lake right yeah you went to the lake yeah, i was we, working y'all went to the lake we, before we went did. to the lake yeah. yeah it was a good time you know and and eddie from the very first day it was like like i had always been there you know yeah. and and that's the way he made you feel he always made you feel welcomed he always made you feel at home and he always made you feel accepted and a part of whatever was going on and i think that's a lot of the characteristics that he had that people gravitated to him you know and uh and that's why people always remember him you know i mean it's just like i get random texts from uh you know from uh, uh from junior you know just just thinking about eddie you know and uh and i think he had that impression on a lot of people so but well on that note i guess we'll wrap it up we love you eddie and we miss you and uh we think about you all the time thanks everybody for listening thanks for listening to the gabe molina podcast 